Hey everybody, it's the lead story, the headline story from this report today is going to be employers turn into snitches. So a lot of people are choosing to stay on the sidelines and not take jobs. We see over 9 million job openings in the U.S. At the same time as we see record number of people living off of some sort of payout or assistance. Now that's going to start dropping here pretty soon because about half the states are cutting off soon or have already cut off those enhanced extra unemployment benefits. And we're going to talk about what happened in Indiana here also. Now let's take a look at this article here and let's talk about this. Fed up with labor shortages, CNY businesses turn on those on jobless benefits who reject work. So these employers are snitching out, as some would call it, that are refusing to take the jobs that they were offered after an interview. Now, this is out of New York, but I've heard this happening in other states. So on one hand, you may say, well, that's fair. Uh, people shouldn't be collecting unemployment benefits that are refusing to take jobs. Jobs that are available and willing to hire them. But the other side of it, uh, what some people say is that these people, they have a right to choose because if you're going to work for the same amount as you can get on unemployment, why would you work? Right? So if you're making $1,000 a month just sitting at home doing what you want, uh, not having to have a boss look over your shoulder, you're going to choose that. And if you're making the same amount at work, even if you're making a little more at work, you still may choose to not take a job and just maybe take a bit of a pay cut or make a little bit less sitting on the sidelines on unemployment. So this is where it gets tricky. Where do you draw the line? Okay, here's another example. What if somebody's making $1,000, let's say a week on unemployment, but they get a job offer where they're only gonna make $700? What if they have a family to feed? What if they have bills to pay? You see what I'm getting at here? So it's not just as simple as saying, hey, anybody that gets offered a job, they need to work that job. Even if it's picking up poop for minimum wage. All right, so I read your comments. I see both sides of the argument on stories like this. Uh, so what do you think? Should people be forced to take whatever job they're offered, even though it may pay less? And also, what if it's a dangerous job? What if it's something where you're possibly going to get injured? So you have to weigh all that in to the scenario of someone choosing between staying on unemployment and taking a job, maybe a job that pays less than unemployment. And some people would actually take it even a step further and say that we don't need any unemployment benefits because if we didn't, we wouldn't have this problem. You wouldn't have a choice between collecting free money and actually going to work somewhere. All right? So there's a lot of different views from one side to the other, everything in between. Uh, but what do you think about this? Employers turning into snitches when people are on, on unemployment and refusing to take the job that they're offered. I can't wait to read your comments on this one. All right, let's move on here. Still on the topic of unemployment. Indiana, the economy is doing so good in Indiana. The judge had to suspend early cutoff of unemployment aid in Indiana, saying it could cause irreparable harm. An Indiana judge said the state must continue to pay enhanced unemployment benefits until a lawsuit on the issue is decided. Now, this injunction comes as 26 states are in the process of ending pandemic-related unemployment benefits for millions of people. Now, on June 19th, Indiana extended the supplementary federal unemployment aid, which included the extra $300 a week, rather than allowing them to expire like many other states are doing. Right, so we again have the argument, is unemployment doing more harm than good? So now people are on it and they don't want to get off it because it could cause them harm is what, what it says here. All right, so here's the slippery slope. Once you get on something, it's very hard to get off it. All right, uh, financial assistance and benefits are kind of like drugs, right? You can get hooked on it. And when it comes time to get off it, it's not going to feel good. And you're going to have a very hard time. And just like drugs, the longer you're on them, the harder it's going to be to get off. And that's another part of that argument that we talked about earlier. Some people say that unemployment benefits and handouts and payouts cause more harm than good. 
And there's also the inflation argument. When you have people getting money for doing nothing, you have people out there with money to spend but producing nothing. So you have more money, less goods and services being produced. It's going to create more demand. Less product, more demand equals rising prices equals inflation. All right, most of you know the ball game. And something tells me that other states may see some similar things happen uh, because, again, most people that get on some sort of payout program end up on them for a very, very long time. And this wouldn't be possible if you couldn't create endless amounts of money out of thin air. So, again, this goes back to the monetary system. If it was sound money, if it was backed by some sort of commodity, let's say silver or gold, it would be impossible, impossible to have this type of payout system where you can just type up trillions of dollars at the push of a button to fund this, fund that, fund this, fund that. You know what I'm saying, right? So inflation here is the enemy, uh, but the Fed, they say there's not enough inflation. They're going to keep rates low. And we even have economists out there saying that the Fed does need to keep rates low, keep propping up the markets, including the mortgage market and the housing market by buying endless amounts of securities from the banks. Uh, because they have to do it, they say, because all the, all the harm that would happen if markets were to drop. See, if prices drop, they say that's harmful. When you have millions, tens of millions of people waiting on the sidelines for homes to become more affordable, um, that's somehow actually harmful. Because all of the jobs that are created when these bubbles are being blown up. You see, bubbles create jobs. When the housing bubble was inflating in the mid 2000s all the way up to about 2008 you saw a surge in real estate agents i forget the exact number but they doubled or tripled and even more in some areas and when the bubble was allowed to burst when the fed wasn't quick enough to respond then you saw the number of real estate agents crash because of the loss of the opportunity see bubbles create jobs and when bubbles pop or burst, then a lot of jobs go with them. But the question is, what good are jobs that are only in existence because of a bubble? Right? Many would argue that if we didn't blow any bubbles, uh, we would have actually better jobs, more meaningful jobs, instead of just jobs that are based on people going out, getting huge loans, getting into tons of debt. And we also have a debt bubble. Will it burst? We'll have to see. We have an insane Fed. Uh, the money printers, who knows what they're going to do? Uh, who knows what could happen? But uh, it doesn't look good, folks. Also, this article that we're looking at here, inflation, the hidden tax on everything. Rising prices are another form of taxation. And to make it doubly painful when prices rise, your taxes are going to go up with it. Not just the hidden tax itself. Because everything costs more, but the actual tax that you pay because the assets are inflated. Think property taxes, right? It's a big, big scam, and uh, it's a very, very dangerous time for our country, everybody. Keep preparing. Keep stacking. Link down below. Silver, the best place to hedge against this insane money printing, out-of-control system. Uh, my opinion, silver, you're going to see some major, major implementation in the very near future. Everybody, thanks for watching. Stay well, stay safe. Keep stacking, stay prepared. Bye now. Peace.